You want to test your own ammo? Find out about expansion, penetration, and get some accurate results? You don't need to buy gelatin. You don't need to work in a laboratory. You can do it with one gallon of milk jugs out on your range. If you want to learn how to do that, stick around. Again, this is Dick Fairburn, Lock and Load YouTube channel. I have mentioned in previous uh, postings about a water jug testing protocol I helped develop about 30 years ago. And a little history on this, uh, Dr. Marty Fackler, when I first met him, was an Army surgeon. Prior to that, he'd been a uh, Navy surgeon on a hospital ship off the coast of Vietnam. So this is a guy with uh, lots and lots of trauma surgery time. By the time he was in the Army, he was tasked with trying to determine how much damage bullets actually did to humans because in the medical profession they had been told to cut out any tissue that they thought had been damaged by a bullet because it would eventually go bad and cause gangrene. But the theory was they didn't really have to take that much out, but they needed science to drive them in that. So Marty Fackler essentially invented the whole concept of terminal ballistics. So he took gelatin blocks uh, from previous ballistic tests and found that they were not accurate. They did not correlate very well to living tissue. So over the years, he changed the formulation from 20% gelatin to 10% gelatin and calibrated. It was able to uh, shoot pigs in other countries and, and get pretty accurate results. So that became the eight-part FBI test that tests all the pistol ammo that law enforcement uses today. Uh, the eight part goes beyond just a bare block of gelatin and uh, most of their shots are through intermediate barriers. Automobile windshield glass, body metal of a car, uh, plywood, sheetrock, things of that sort. So they want to see how those bullets perform not only against a, a, a bare human target but also against something that they have to go through to get there. What we're simulating here is just that bare gelatin shot, no, uh, no extra intervening cover between that. But when I met Dr. Fackler, he said the problem with the 10% gelatin was that it really needs to be mixed and aged and used under lavatory conditions. And then calibrated. They calibrate it with a, a pump-up BB gun uh, that goes over the chronograph, delivers a certain uh, feet per second, and then will penetrate X number distance into the gelatin. So if you see on YouTube, you see people shooting into gelatin, first of all, the gelatin needs to be amber-colored. If it's not, if it's clear, then it, it's an approximation kind of gelatin. Also, you need to see a BB sitting in that gelatin block about three or four inches inside of it. And if it doesn't have that, then it's not calibrated gelatin. Uh, it's, it's interesting, it can be used maybe to compare two loads, one to another, but it's not gonna give you valid information in terms of uh, expansion, fragmentation, or penetration, unless it's used under those laboratory conditions. He said the interesting thing was pistol bullets do almost exactly the same thing in terms of expansion, penetration, fragmentation in water as they do in that 10% calibrated gelatin. The problem he had was how do we measure distance? Uh, he had been shooting into uh, crime lab catch tanks which are just big steel boxes filled with water and uh, he, you know, that's where he found that the expansion and, and, and uh, fragmentation was almost exactly alike but how do you measure distance? So he kind of put me on that and first suggested that we use Ziploc bags because he said a quart Ziploc bag full of water is about two inches thick so we could gauge that penetration every two inches. It's hard to keep the Ziploc bags closed. It's hard to line them up uh, in a rack or something like that. So I eventually went to one gallon milk jugs and when you fill them up from front to back in, in the lower portion, they're, just, they're six inches almost exactly. Unbeknownst to me, he had another guy on the East Coast playing with water to see if we could come up with a simple system. That guy tried Ziplocs and then eventually went to milk cartons, the half gallon paper milk cartons. And we knew that the bullets would go further in water than they do in gelatin. And if you've, if you've ever seen people pull those bullets out of that calibrated gelatin, 
that's really tough stuff. It slows those bullets down a lot faster than the water down, does, at least in, uh, at pistol velocities. And the conversion I came up with was 1.55. It's going to go 1.55 further in water than it does in the gelatin. The guy on the East Coast came up with 1.5. So Fackler was, you know, he said that, that's splitting hairs. You've, uh, you've eventually proven that we can gauge penetration in those uh, water containers. I don't know about the guy on the East Coast, but I was able to go a step further. At about that time, uh, Hornady Manufacturing who was just then getting into the ammunition business pretty well. Before that, they were, they were almost exclusively a bullet company. Uh, Steve Hornady asked me to come over and do a little consulting with them because in their ammo business, they wanted to go into the, the law enforcement market. And they wanted to know, you know, in this caliber, what do you think law enforcement's probably going to choose for different bullet weights and what kind of performance are we looking for? And uh, they were just getting into the gelatin testing, just starting to learn how the FBI did their, their testing and how to meet that testing. Uh, so I went over for the consultant for a couple of days, and he said, you know, what's your consultant fee going to be? And I said, all the gelatin I can shoot in your underground range. So by doing that, I took the exact same loads that I had fired into water jugs from pistols and rifles, went over there, shot it into their, from the same weapon, same load, shot it into their calibrated gelatin blocks, and I was able to pin down the penetration, even though they're six-inch jugs, I was able to pin down the penetration to within about two inches. Uh, so it's a viable system. Now on YouTube, I see a lot of guys shooting gelatin, and I, or excuse me, water jugs, and I say it, it might be valid to compare two different loads on that given day and say this one stopped in the third jug, the, the other one stopped in the fourth jug, but you can't get any quantifiable numbers to go along with that. So what I want to show you is that you can save water jugs or go buy distilled water, however you want to do it, and you can shoot into them with pistol velocity weapons and get very accurate performance estimations of what it's going to do. It's going to be very, very close, generally about 95% the same as if it were shot into a bare 10% calibrated gelatin block. So it's cheap, it's easy, you can do it at home. Now with rifles, the 1.55 formula kind of falls apart and the bullets tend to expand more, fragment more from a rifle than they do from a pistol. We've never pinned down exactly where that happens, but if you're over 1,500 feet per second, certainly by the time you're up to 1,800 feet per second, that system kind of falls apart for rifles. So you're not going to get meaningful numbers. You can't compare water to the gelatin blocks beyond, say, 1,800 feet per second, but you can still use it for comparisons. This bullet in my 300 Winchester mag goes further than this other bullet in my 300 Winchester mag. So you can kind of check your hunting level performance with that. And the first one I'm going to demonstrate is going to show you the difference between pistol velocities and rifle velocities with the same load. Um, I'm writing for U.S. Concealed Carry Association now, the Concealed Carry Magazine. I'm their, their uh, carbine columnist and uh, one of the articles we've already written is how about a home defense carbine other than an AR or M4? And a lever action can be very good. Some parts of the country, I mean, we've had the, the Bruin decision now, which should open up uh, almost everything in terms of gun freedom. Uh, we're going to see a lot of the laws fall. We're already seeing a lot of those laws fall. But there are still places where dealing with buying, having a semi-automatic weapon like an AR-15 or an M4 is politically tough. Is there any reason a lever action rifle couldn't give you a great home defense gun? And, and my answer is yes, it can. And in fact, my home defense gun now, and especially when I lived out in Wyoming, it was hanging over the back door for many years, is a little 357 Magnum lever action carving. It's, uh, it's based on the um, Winchester 92 action. The, the one I have in particular was made by Browning a number of years ago. They made 92s in both 357 and 44. Uh, they also made the larger 1886 and 4570, and I have one of those. Uh, that's not much of a home defense weapon because it's going to over penetrate greatly, a lot of recoil and things like that. But the little 357 is great. So what I'm going to show you is one particular load and, and, and the thing you need to understand about bullets when they hit a target, whether it is you know an animal, a human, water, gelatin, if they're designed to expand, it's going to have to have a minimum threshold of velocity to, to kick on that, that expansion. 
the faster you drive it, the more it's going to expand. So therefore, in general terms, the faster it is going when it hits the target, the less it will penetrate. Since it expands to a larger diameter, that larger diameter is more difficult to force through whatever your test medium is, and it doesn't go as far. Lower velocities tend to penetrate more. So when I first started using that 357 carbine, I tested some loads in, in the water jugs, and what I found out was good pistol loads sometimes completely blow into tiny fragments from that 20-inch carbine barrel. Uh, the load I settled on uses XTP bullets from Hornady. That happens to be one of the, it was one of the first of their modern hollow point designs, and it's one of the toughest hollow point designs. So it generally doesn't expand quite as much as some of the, the newer stuff and it tends to penetrate further. Uh, but still, I wanted kind of minimum level penetration for home defense. I don't want it to go through and, and go through a wall and endanger your kids or if you live in an apartment building, endanger your neighbors or something like that. So I settled on the 125 grain uh, Hornady XTP load. And the 125 grain, towards the end of the, the reign of the revolver, uh, the 125 grain hollow point was considered to be probably the best performing 357 load for officers, you know, people defending themselves on the street. It just it gave a real good balance of velocity and, and expansion and penetration. So I'm going to fire those Hornady XTP loads, one through a four inch revolver, and then we'll come back and, and send it through that 20 inch carbine and I'll, I've got the velocities in my, in my book of data at home, so we'll follow up on this, tell you the two velocities, and show you the extreme difference in terms of penetration and uh, how it expands and fragments. So let's get started. We'll, we'll start the 357 first. Okay, this is a Ruger GP100, four inch barrel, Hornady, 125 XTP 357 Magnum load. And when you jugs, you want to get down on their level, get lined up right, and put it in the lower third because that's where you're getting that full six inches of water to test your penetration. And you get wet when you do this. Okay, we started out with eight jugs. You see here the lead jug was completely blown apart, the impact of that. Second jug in line, in, out. Third jug in line, in and out, exit wound. Fourth jug did not make it in. You see the bullet was found here laying on the table. But it broke the front of the next jug. Water is clearly leaking out. I'm going to show you a form that you fill out for each of these shots. And depending on whether it broke the back of the jug you found it in or if it broke the front of the next one, there's, there's several additions you make. But you can see it fully penetrated three jugs and then it broke the front of the next one. When we add that all together and apply that 1.55 uh, conversion formula, you're going to get a real good estimate of penetration. Here's the expanded bullet. The XTP bullets typically they expand out into those little kind of rhomboid shapes and they very rarely blow off any fragments to speak of. They just fold the jacket under and have those squares on top. But you're going to see when we throw this from, this is, prop, this is right around 1380 to 1400 feet per second out of a four inch revolver. It's going to be about 2100 feet per second or about 50% faster out of the 20 inch carbine barrel. And you're going to see a radical change in the amount of penetration, expansion, uh, and fragmentation too. So fully penetrated three was found between jug three and four. Okay, this is a uh, Browning 92 carbine, 357 Magnum. Uh, you can see it's rigged out for home defense. I've got a uh, Streamlight TLR2G mounted on a uh, unit that goes over your, your magazine tube on here. That gives me both a nighttime light and a green aiming laser. So, you know, green lasers zeroed for 100 yards, just like the sights. So anywhere from contact range out to 100 yards, I've got both day and night capability with this carbine. And you're going to see it strikes a pretty wicked blow from this carbine. It's a 20 inch barrel. When I used to do demos with this more uh, in the past, <laughs> I wore a raincoat. Okay, 357 Magnum carbine, first jug was destroyed. Second jug split wide open. 
Third jug, I got an entrance wound, but no exit wound. And the projectile looks to be in the third jug. So from the revolver, you can see one major fragment there and the very much more expanded and fragmented bullet. From the revolver, it fully passed through three jugs, broke the surface of the fourth jug, was found laying there in between. This, it only fe fully penetrated two jugs, and one of the criteria I used to add is, did it mark the back of this jug? And no, it did not. So there's no mark on the jug. Entrance wound. I see no marks. So it did not fully penetrate 18 or uh, 18 inches of water. And uh, when we fill out the form, we'll get the uh, the accurate calculation for you on that. I'll get you a close up here. Okay, this shows you the difference. There's one pretty sizable fragment there. But the main part of the projectile, much more expanded, much wider frontal area. You can see that the shank has almost disappeared, so it, it's curled over further in the expansion. And it has blown off fragments. Much less penetration, much more expansion. And if you believe in energy dump, which I'm convinced has almost nothing to do with stopping power, it's delivering much, much more kinetic energy on impact. So there's a 357 from a carbine. Hey, I said that this system is most accurate at handgun velocities, below 15, 1600 feet per second. We're getting very consistent results that match really well with the, the calibrated 10%. So I'm going to shoot a couple pistols so dealing with this system. One thing you can use it to check against, let's say we've got a full size 9mm here. This is an HK VP9, about a 4 and an 8th inch barrel. A regular pistol that I carry on a daily basis is a Kimber Micro 9 with not much more than a 3 inch barrel. Longer barrels develop more velocity. More velocity generally gives you more expansion, less penetration. That one inch of difference in a handgun is probably not going to make a lot of difference, but with some loads it could. With some loads that might drop below the threshold of reliable expansion for you. So you could test your small carry, daily carry pistol. Uh, with various ammunitions and see which ones give you good performance. Um, I'm going to be shooting Barnes uh, Black Hills Ammunition loads these bullets in some of their handgun loads. Corbon has a very similar unit. There's probably others out there as well. The, uh, the all copper is really kind of the, the last in the generation of, of uh, hollow point developments. There are eight police agencies using this load. A lot of police agencies load like uh, the Spear Gold Dot or uh, Hornady's Critical Duty, which is designed for that eight-part barrier test. Uh, Hornady also has a critical defense, a little bit softer, a little bit more expansion because they figure probably not going to deal with those intervening cover items. So there's a lot of choices out there, but this way you can test it with your particular pistol and see if you're good expansion and, and good penetration. FBI their, their uh, penetration threshold is a minimum of 14 inches, probably work, uh, but sometimes when these bullets open really fast, they're not even going to get to that lower level. So let's give this a try. This is a Barnes Tactics P in a HK VP9. All right, first jug destroyed, entrance hole, exit. Not nearly as blown up as from that 357 carbine, obviously. Much higher velocity, much more energy being dumped into there. Second, we have an entrance and an exit. Third, we have an entrance. And the bullet is stuck. If you can see, the bullet is just stuck in the back of this jug. Now, to use our formula, we need to go further. We need to look at this jug and see if it made a mark on this jug or if it broke the skin of it. And there is no mark. Okay, fully penetrated three jugs stuck in the back of the third jug. I'm going to push that in. OK, 
Okay, all right, here's a close-up of this load. This is the Barnes TAC XP. It's a 115 grain, it's a plus P loading for a little bit more velocity. You can see there's a lot of the shank that's left. Very good expansion on those pedals, very wide. Not great penetration, uh, fully penetrating three. Uh, we're gonna be real close to that 12 inches or under kind of minimum that I like. So we'll see if going to the shorter barrel might change the performance of this load a little bit. Okay, this is a short barrel shot. This is a Kimber, X, uh, Kimber Micro 9. Same load, Barnes TAC XP 115 all copper hollow point plus P loading. We got eight jugs again. If you're wondering why the lead jug has a little color to it, uh, when I filled them up this morning, that was a cider jug I had just emptied out and apparently didn't get rich down a little bit. So it's got a little color to it, but won't affect the, the performance of the test at all. So we'll give this a, a, a test out of a shorter barrel and see if the performance changes. Okay, test from the short barrel, Kimber Micro 9. First jug, cider jug, entrance wound, damage, second jug, entrance wound, exit wound, third jug, we have an entrance wound right here in the front, and very much like the same round fired out of the, the longer barrel Heckler, it is hung up in the back of this jug. So we look further, we gotta find out if it marked or broke, and what you see here, if you can see the bubbles coming up, the back of this, or the front of the next jug is broken. So this is gonna get a penetration addition. It penetrated a little bit further than out of the longer barrel, which it makes sense. You reduce velocity, you usually have a little bit less expansion, but a little bit more penetration, okay? But you can see that very clearly. Let's empty out this third jug. We'll get that bullet back in there. That one hung up on a pedal. But there it is. Here's the close-up TAC XP from the Kimber Micro 9. You can see a lot of the shank left there, so it did not drive that penetration further down the bullet. But still, very nice, very wide pedals. And it's gonna have just a touch more penetration in the formula than came from that uh, HK VP9. Okay, we'll wrap this up with the uh, kind of the office portion of what we do in my water jug testing protocol. Uh, first we'll do the 357. This is the uh, Hornady 125 XTP fired from uh, Ruger GP100. So here's the form I use. 357 mag Hornady 125 grain XTP. The velocity on this was 1362. Go down here and fill in the, uh, the diameter. And when I measure the diameter of these, I normally go across the widest part and then the narrowest part, kind of average the two. And diameter of this is uh, 0 0.550. The weight is 115 grains. Starting off with a 125, so it lost only uh, 10 grains of bullet mass uh, testing in the water jugs. Okay, now our formula, these terminal additions I'll get to. The bullet was found in jug number three. It fully penetrated two jugs, six inches each, that gives us 12. And now we do a terminal addition here. And, and here's the numbers that I came up with in, in calibrating against gelatin. If, if it's found in jug number three, if there's no mark on the back, we give it half credit for going through that jug, so we only give it three inches. If it marked the back in, in some way that you can see, then we give it full six inches of penetration. If it broke the back of the jug that it was in, we go to 6.75. If it put a mark on the next jug, we bump up to 7.5. If it broke the next jug, there's water leaking out, then we'll go to eight inches. And in this case, it did break the next jug. So we add eight to our 12, that gives us 20 inches of water penetration. 
we divide by the handgun conversion formula of 1.55 and that gives us 12.9 inches of equivalent penetration. So, so if we were to shoot this in 10% calibrated gelatin, we would expect to get about 12.9 inches. Now that's below the FBI recommended number of 14. However, this would probably be a very effective load from a handgun for self-defense uses. All right, now we're going to look at the 357 load fired from the 20-inch carbine barrel. As you can see, the expansion is, is much greater. We even have a, one large fragment that we found, and undoubtedly other fragments that, that we did not find, because you're going to see a lot of uh, loss of mass with this load, too. So, 357, Hornady, 125 XTP, this was from a Browning 92, 20-inch barrel. The velocity was 21, 12 feet per second. From the revolver, we got 1362, so that's a 750 feet per second increase with the carbine barrel. That's going to cause it to expand more, fragment more, penetrate less. We think, so let's find out. The bullet was found in jug number three. That means it fully penetrated two for 12 inches. When we look at the terminal edition, there was no mark on the back of the jug it was found in. So no mark is a 3 inch terminal edition. So it gives us 15 inches of water penetration. Because of the higher velocity, we can't use that 1.55 handgun conversion. We've got to go to 1.3 because anything over 1800 feet per second, uh, the water is harder, it's doing more damage to the projectile, and uh, the penetration simply doesn't correlate to gelatin that well, so uh, we're down to 1.3. So 15 divided by 1.3 conversion factor gives us 11.5 inches. We had 12.9 inches of penetration with the revolver load. Not nearly as much expansion, not nearly as much uh, fragmentation. So even though this is well below what the FBI says of 14 inches of uh, penetration minimum, this is going to be a devastating load up close. And, and if you go out to 50 yards or so, even out closer to 100 yards, you're going to see that the, the penetration and expansion come a lot closer to what the revolver produced. So this is going to be a good, effective self-defense load out to 100 yards or more. The diameter, when fired here, 0.610. The retained weight was 91 grains, so it lost 34 grains in fragmentation and expansion with this load. So you can see the distinct difference between a revolver load, 4 inch barrel, 1300 feet per second, fired from the carbine over 2100 feet per second, and, and um, you have, to, you have to shoot these into the jugs firsthand to see the raw power of this load out of a 357 carbine. It's really pretty impressive. All right, now we'll calculate the two 9mm. Both were Barnes 115 grain X bullets, all, all copper bullets. One was fired from the VP9 with a 4 and an 8th inch barrel. You can see that excellent expansion, perfect expansion. A lot of shank left, so it, 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 it it expanded pretty much fully out to where it's going to. It would have to have a lot more velocity uh, to start to fold those pedals back. Uh, and one advantage to that, if, if you notice, these, these pedals have very sharp edges. So they tend to cut more than they just push blood vessels out of the way. Uh, and that can create a lot more and more rapid bleeding. All right, this was found in jug number three. Stuck in the back. It fully penetrated to that's six inches, so 12. It broke the, er, uh, see, it did not mark the next jug. It broke the back of number three, so it's 6.75, but it did not mark the next. So a terminal addition of 6.75, that takes us to 
divided by 1.55 equals 12.1. Round that off. So 18.75 water penetration, conversion factor of 155, and we get 12.1 inches. That's below the FBI recommended minimum of 14. However, I think this is going to be a very good anti-personnel, good, very good self-defense round for a 9mm. Um, so this is the VP9 with the 4-inch barrel. We note that it got to a diameter 6.95. It kept all of its weight, 115 grains, and that is typical for the all-copper projectiles. Okay, our second 9mm test. Slightly shorter barrel with the same load, the Barnes 115 X bullet. Excellent expansions. It's a little bit more irregular expansion. Uh, a couple of the pedals are not fully opened up. Uh, not a lot of size difference, but it, it's just not as uh, really as perfect as the one from the 4 inch barrel. Bullet was found in jug, jug number 3 again. It fully penetrated 2, so that's 12 inches. Now, this one. Again, stuck in the back of number three, but it did break the surface of the next jug. So our terminal addition is going to be eight. So that takes us to 20 inches of water penetration. 20 inches of water penetration. Conversion factor of 1.55. Gives us a penetration estimate of 12.9 inches. One from the longer barrel here, if we look at it, was 12.1 inches. So it penetrated slightly further, even in our ju water jugs. And water jugs are not accurate to the fraction of an inch, or even to the inch, really like calibrated gelatin would be. But what it's showing you is by slowing that bullet down just a little bit, uh, the diameter of the um, one from the VP9 was 695. This is 682, so slightly less expansion, slightly more penetration. And that kind of proves the system because less expansion is generally, or less velocity is generally going to give you less expansion and more penetration. And that's what happened to these. So that's the system that you use. Here's my formula once again. Bullet was found in jug number three. That meant it fully penetrated two at six inches each is 12. The terminal addition that we add for the jug that it's in is, is listed here on my form. If it does not mark the jug that it's in, we only give it half credit of three inches. If it made a mark on the back that you can see, then we give it full penetration of six inches. If it broke the back of that jug, we give it 6.75, just a little bit more. If it marked the next jug, 7.5, and if it broke the next jug, 8 inches. And that's what we see with this one. This was, was stuck in the back of number 3, so it's found in number 3. That means it fully penetrated 2 at 6 inches for 12. We give it the terminal addition of 8 because it broke the next jug behind it. Broke it and water was leaking out. So we give it a terminal addition of this 12 plus 8 is 20. 20 divided by the conversion factor of 1.55. Approximately 12.9 inches of penetration is what we would expect to see in calibrated gelatin. So you can test pistol bullets and you can get some pretty accurate results. When you go past here, I list 1800 feet per second, we're going to drop to a conversion factor of 1.3. So if you're testing expanding bullets in your 30 out 6, you're way above that 1800. So you can kind of estimate your penetration with this 1.3 conversion. But what the water is going to do is, is ex expand and fragment those soft point bullets more than they would in calibrated gelatin. Water is harder. It's denser than gelatin. But the gelatin is kind of tougher. So it's a little bit harder for them to force their way through. And that's why we go to that 1.3 conversion factor. So if you've got any questions, you can put them in the comments. I'll be glad to, uh, to help you out with this. I think it's very interesting that, you know, for a long time, I've been able to uh, calibrate these with the, the help of Dr. Fackler when we, when we first worked this system. 
And now you can use just ordinary jugs of water and test your pistol performance at home. So I hope that uh, helps you a little bit. If you think this is worthwhile, then please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and um, we'll see you on the next video. Okay, we got them both here now. You ready? Bud got one. Ginger got one. Uh-huh. Oh, she missed it. She usually gets them, doesn't she, bud? Mm -hmm. Okay, girl, last one. You ready? You ready? Yeah! That's all there is till next time.